How you doing? Welcome back to the channel, guys. And today we have the JLab Go Keyboard. This is, you can actually find this product $20 online at the JLab website. In addition to that, you can find it at Walmart, which is where I purchased it for $20. Now, I have been using this for quite some time, and I'm going to kind of give you a synopsis of how good and how well it actually works. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop right into this review. Now, what I will let you guys know right now, even though it's in an original box, it's not an original packaging, meaning I didn't put it back with the tissue paper and all that. I wasn't interested in doing all that. I have the instructions right here to show you how to connect it, which we're going to do in real time. So just for video purposes, let's pop this open right here. Now, this will be wrapped up, of course, when you do get it. Uh, you'll take this keyboard out of it. There's nothing else inside. I'm going to end up throwing that box away because this is actually a keyboard that I personally use for my computer from time to time. Now, it does come with AAA batteries, I believe. I believe two of them it comes with. But if not, then, you know, you'll have to buy two AAA batteries. But it does. Yeah, actually, nope. Here you are. They are included, the two AAA batteries. Like I said, it's been a while, about a month since I actually purchased this keyboard. And, of course, it does have the USB dongle right here, as you can see. Um, if you have a Bluetooth connection, it is possible to connect multiple Bluetooths. It has what it's called multi, uh, sorry, dual wireless connection. So you have the option between a 2.4 gigahertz connection, which is the piece in the back that you connect through USB-A. You have the option to actually set this up through the Bluetooth, two separate Bluetooth options. So that if you're using a phone, a tablet, a computer, whatever it is that you want, you can connect it that way. You also have the option to switch it between Mac, Android, and Windows so that you can seamlessly connect between multiple devices. So if you sync it to multiple devices and you have the dongle in, then it's a sequence that you'll actually press to switch it around, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But anywho, this is a very nice looking keyboard myself. I said myself. <laughs> it's a nice looking keyboard, I have to say so myself. Um, I'm personally, I like everything that's wireless when I use my computer and I like it where it's actually very, very responsive. So let's say you plug this up through a dongle or through Bluetooth takes a few seconds well if it's a dongle as soon as you turn it on it takes like maybe one or two seconds in real time to connect and when you tap the keys even if i lift it up move it in different spots it's very very responsive i haven't had i had minor issues where sometimes i'll tap the key and it may or may not uh register it depends on how hard i tap the key i'm used to more so mechanical buttons so i tap lightly on the keyboard and i did have to hit harder key presses to do so for it to register but realistically it did do fine i haven't had any issues uh another reason why i like this keyboard is right here this uh doubles down as a pause and play button in addition to the knob goes up and down for your volume and when i'm playing video games elden ring other games and doing edits and things like that on my computer i prefer having a physical button that i could turn up and down rather than holding the fn or control or something like that and pressing the volume up and down it seems like it's just too much work for me it's not a lot to be honest i'm just being lazy but we live in a time of technology and that's how i like it so if you look at the keyboard itself like i said i don't think it's too you know it's not super super sturdy like it's cheaply made where if you bend it it doesn't feel like it's going to crack or anything if you place it inside of your book bag you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever it won't crack inside and it's very very easy to clean as you can see just an air can and you're good to go so with that being said this is a little unboxing section let's go ahead and actually connect it to a android device to show you in real time how it connects all right guys so i'm going to show you how to connect this via bluetooth and make this very very simple for anyone that needs to use it so if you hit fn right here i'm sorry i'm gonna pull this button up right here fn you have multiple options to switch between devices you can connect two two bluetooth devices at the same time and of course you have the 2.4 gigahertz receiver right here which plugs into basically a usb a computer things like that and it'll work automatically because the software will automatically download or if you're using like an android device uh, i'm sorry a pc device or a mac device it'll take care of that for you you won't have to worry about anything but syncing it to bluetooth is a little bit different so in order to sync it to bluetooth there's two options you have fn and two then you have fn and three that registers pulled up for you you can see right here the first bluetooth device the second Bluetooth device, and this is the two point gigahertz. If you want to switch it back to USB mode where you don't have to worry about Bluetooth at all, because not all computers have Bluetooth. A lot of self-built computers don't. 
and they just typically have, to, you know, USB 3s, things like that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put it in real time and connect it to the uh, G-Lab. Put this right here so you can see it actually connect. So here we are. Put that in an angle. So what we're going to go ahead and do is hit, as soon as you power it on, wait for it to power it on, you hit F1 and 2. You just put press them together. It'll put it in the mode where, right here, it'll put it in that mode. Just do it one time, make sure it works. All right. Then you hold connect while it's blinking. That puts it in a mode where it's actually able to be found by Bluetooth devices. So while it's doing that, right away it popped up. So I'm going to go ahead and tap JLab. Here it go. As you can see, press pair. It is currently paired. Just to show you that it does, in fact, work, we're going to hit messages right here. And just start do 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 do. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. So, with that being said, I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to turn it back on, and we're going to check to see how many how long it takes for it to reconnect. Let's give it a second. Yep, about a second or two. So it took about one real second, maybe two maximum, and it connects right away through Bluetooth. It is very fast to connect. Now. The only issue, what I will say is that for those that might be a little confused, let's go ahead and look at these instructions right here together, and I'll explain it to you. So as you can see, where it says you hit the, I'm sorry, where is it? Here, here, F, FN and 3 for the second connection, it allows you to switch between Bluetooth connections. So if you sync this to hypothetically an iPhone or a Android device, and then one is a PC or multiple Android devices, things like that, and then what happens is, you have this key sequence right here where it says Mac, Android, and Windows. So what ends up happening, if you hit F, N, Q, W, or E, remember, function button, that's what function means. It allows you to switch between whatever platform you're using. So if I connect this to an Android device, I'll hit F, N, and W, and what it does is it makes it more compatible, like button-wise, with Android devices. If I do it with a Mac device, obviously the control option and command makes this keyboard look like Mac. Um, so you 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 hit F and I'm sorry I'm stuttering. <laughs> you hit Mac, and it just switches between the sequence of buttons to make it easier for you to navigate whatever device it is that you're using. Now, personally, I just leave it on Windows. I don't have any issues whatsoever. Um, for you guys that do the multi-point setup. This is an ideal keyboard for you because it's only a whopping $20. It's actually very, very affordable and works very, very well in my opinion. Um, like I said, I use it every day. Now, what aspect we are going to talk about this particular keyboard, and this is the, uh, the bad part, is that occasionally when I do, you can turn this off, when I use this keyboard occasionally, sometimes I'll press the buttons in if it's sitting for a while and the first key might not register from time to time. So I'll type in, I don't know. Uh, for tough and they'll say or tough instead because the F to the register so kind of be aware of the fact that you might have to tap the button just to give it a wake up mode first before you go into full keyboard tapping mode and again it's not much really to say it is a keyboard I like it again it has double A batteries I haven't switched them yet and it's been quite some time I normally actually leave the keyboard on 24 hours a day because it doesn't say anything about having a standby mode but when it's off, like the PC is off and stuff, it's not really connected to it's The receiver isn't connected on the other end. And I guess theoretically it's saving battery. But a lot of these keyboards last for months upon months with just two batteries. So I don't have an issue. And I have tons of AAA batteries necessary and other keyboards to use just in case this did die. So with that being said, um, hopefully you like the review. No, it's not the most super in-depth review, but it is very simple to just sync this. You just tap the buttons like I showed you. You hold the connect. It'll put it in sync mode that fast, that easy. It's very easily detectable. You know, other cheaper keyboards sometimes take longer and it's a harder process, but this is very, very simple. And I'm actually very proud to own this. I actually saw it at Walmart. Oh, there is one more thing I need to talk to you guys about. I forgot the media controls. So right here, like remember I told you before, I actually didn't tell you all the media controls. You turn it, rotate, volume up and down, single press, pause and play. If you hold it, it'll backtrack. And if you double press, It'll make the song go forward. So if you're controlling music, YouTube, things like that, uh, I believe in YouTube, if you hold it, it'll uh, pause it for you. I'm sorry, not hold it. Uh, it'll go backwards for you. You press it once, it'll pause your video for you. And if you hold it, it normally skips to the next video, which you don't want to necessarily do. 
um, just be aware of the fact that you don't want to press that while you're online because it could affect some of the work that you're working on. Like if I use Canva and things like that, I'm not too sure if this will affect my Canva, but I would say just don't mess with the knob when you're doing that. But anywho, that is the review. It's a very simple keyboard. I happen to like the way it looks. It functions very well. It does exactly what I needed to do. It has a $20 price tag. Uh, built for tough. <laughs> but anyway, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.